In this video, we're going to test dialogues and more specifically, we're going to be testing a third party uh, dialogue library called Material Dialogues. It's one of my favorite dialogue libraries. Actually, it's the only dialogue library that I know of that I, that I use other than just default Android stuff. Um, so I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh man, this test is going to be way different because he's using a third party library, but it's actually not. So regardless of whether I'm using a third party library to test dialogues, uh, or you know, show te yeah, test dialogues in general, um, it's not going to make a difference. Your tests are going to be very similar. It's, we're going to pop up a dialogue. We're going to test entering some input into the dialogue. So I'll just actually show you a demo here. Launch the dialogue, test capturing some, some input, enter your name. It says Mitch. Um, notice if I click OK, then the name gets sent back to the activity and set to a text view. So it, whether you're using material dialogues or just default dialogues on Android, it doesn't matter. The test will be the same. So again, a couple of things I want to mention here is if I open the dialogue and I try to click OK, notice that that doesn't do anything. I can dismiss it by clicking away from the dialogue. It has to have some kind of a, a name entered into here before I can click OK. So that's going to be part of our test. We're going to test whether the dialogue comes into view, uh, whether the user can dismiss the dialogue by clicking OK before they enter a name. So they shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, entering a name and then sending that name back to the activity where it's being displayed in a text view. So all of those things we're going to test. Um, kind of the, the main thing that's going to be different if you've been following along with the rest of the course is typing something into, a, into an input field. So, so far we haven't done any kind of testing with Espresso where we had some kind of an input and I, and I, had, and I had to type something in here or the test couldn't proceed. So we're going to be writing a test, making the test write some input before it, it clicks a button. So that'll be different. That'll be something new that you haven't seen before. And just as a heads up, for those of you who uh, haven't been following along with the course, this, this uh, video is going to be actually part of a full length course on my website that's completely free. It's called UI Testing for Beginners. You can go to my website and go to the coming soon section over here to find it or go to courses if you're watching at some later date and just type you know UI, UI Testing to the search bar here and it, you'll see UI Testing for Beginners. Again, it's completely free. All you got to do is register on my website and you can just watch it. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds to register. It also keeps track of your progress if you watch it on my website, which is pretty cool. You can see it uh, gives a little progress update. And if you go to the course, if I had watched any of these, it would show the course in the uh, in the side over here too. You can also watch it on YouTube, but um, I, I would personally recommend going to the website just because it keeps track of your progress and uh, I think it's just easier. So now we've talked about the code, we've done a demo, we've talked about the course. Uh, now where can you get the code for this particular video? Well, there'll be a link in the description of this video that'll take you to the source code for the end of this video. And if you wanna just follow along, make sure to check out the branch Dialog Capture Input. So you can clone the, you can clone the repository from Git, you can download the repository, whichever you prefer, and then just go to that branch and you'll be looking at uh, exactly, actually you'll be looking at more than I'm looking at because that's gonna be the end point for this video. Um, so we haven't actually even written the test yet. All right, so uh, let's let's actually write these tests. I've been talking too long. So I'm gonna go into main activity here. This is the uh, main activity, the only activity for the project. It's very simple. There's just a button that launches the dialogue. Well, you saw it in the demo. Just a button that launches the dialogue. If I click it, dialogue comes into view, asks for input. So pretty straightforward. Uh, show dialogue is the only function. It just creates a new material dialogue. So it uses the dot show. Uh, specifies an input type for the dialog. So just saying, yeah, this, this dialog is meant for capturing some input. I want to wait for the positive button. So set that equal to true. Otherwise, so that says, no, we can't dismiss this until the positive button is clicked. Allow empty false. So there must be input in the dialog to allow the OK button to be clicked. So again, if you look here and I launch the dialog, notice I can't click the OK button until something is entered, then I can click the OK button. So that's all That's all that uh, those settings mean. And then once some input is captured, this this lambda is run here and it's and it calls set name to text view and it just sets the the name to the text view through this function it has a title enter your name the positive button's okay so pretty simple it's pretty straightforward stuff now let's write the test so i'm going to right click on main activity go to generate a new test function and we called main activity test um, and I just realized that I forgot to talk about the dependencies at the beginning of this video. So maybe let's talk about those real quick for those of you who are just watching this video as a standalone. So if we go into build.gradle, we have the material dialogues dependency. You can get that from a GitHub page. If you just go to, if you just literally Google, uh, material dialogues, 
it should probably be the first entry right here. That'll take you to his GitHub page. So you can get just follow the instructions down here or copy the dependencies that I just pointed out. Um, then we have the Espresso testing dependencies that we're gonna need in this video. We need the core dependency. I can't remember if we actually need the contrib dependency, but I have it in there anyway. And then we have we have the runner for the JUnit runner, the core for the activity scenario. And then this one we might not need either, I can't remember. But if you wanna be safe, just throw all these in there and you'll have everything you'll need 100%. So now let's write the test. So coming down into our test class, I'm gonna click Alt Insert, go to new test function. This is gonna be called test show dialog and we also want to capture name input. So obviously we're testing to see if the dialog is visible and we're also testing to see if we're able to capture some, some input from that dialog. So first of all, let's write the given section. Well, what is given? We have to use our activity scenario, which those of you who are following along with the course should be very familiar with the activity scenario right now. We've used it many times. We wanna launch main activity. So this is gonna launch a simulated, uh, a testing version of main activity. Now I also want to define a constant called name. I'm gonna say Mitch. So that's the name that's gonna be written into, actually I'll, I'll call this uh, expected name, expected name, because that's the one that we're gonna write into the input of the dialog. So let's do execute and verify. So the first thing is I want to perform a click to launch the dialog. So on view with ID, getting those two imports, the ID of the button that launches the dialog is button launch dialog. I wanna perform a click to launch that dialog. So getting that import. So now I wanna to check to make sure that that, that dialog is in view. So I'm gonna write uh, on view with ID, r dot well actually here let's we're going to do something different because so far in the course all i've done is on view with id i haven't shown you any other way to look for things in the view so another thing that you can do is actually look for a text in a view so i can say on view with text and i can look for a particular uh, uh text like a, a text view for example like i'm looking for a specific thing that should be in a text view so the text that i'm going to look for is r dot string dot text enter name text text enter name now if we go into activity main that is the text or not an activity main sorry um that so this is actually the text that is inside of the inside of the dialog so if we go into main activity and go to the show dialog function it says enter name this is text enter name so this is what we we are looking for if if the dialog is in view then this text should be in view so that's that's what i'm ser searching for here so i'm going to check if it is displayed that's all so I check if matches get that import, making sure to get the view assertions import and then is displayed. So I'm just checking to see if that text is in view. If it is, that means that yes, our dialog is in view. Now I wanna to test to make sure that the dialog can't be dismissed if the user clicks the okay button before they've entered any input. So again, uh, just to demonstrate here, if I launch the dialog and I try to click okay, the dialog should still be in view. So that's what I'm gonna, what, that's what I'm gonna test for right here. So on view with text, r.string.text okay, because that's the text that's displayed on the okay button. I wanna say perform click, and then I wanna check to see if that's still in view. So I will do the same test up here. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm checking to see if the dialogue is still in view, and it should be. I'm actually gonna give myself some more room here so I can, uh, you guys can get a better view. Now we're going to enter a name. So enter some input. So this is gonna be on view. This is another thing that we haven't done before. I've never showed you how to do this. Uh, basically what you wanna do is you wanna find the, the ID of the view that we, you wanna to write to. So if for, for those of you who aren't using material dialogues, this is gonna be really simple because you'll have a custom layout for a dialogue and you can just get the dialogue from the edit text and then just reference that here. But if you're using material dialogues like I am, you have to find this. So I'm gonna bring up the GitHub page and I'll show you where you can find the ID for whatever you're looking for. So in our case, we're using an input dialog. So the, the layout that we're looking for is gonna be in the input section. If you're using some other kind of dialog, uh, like a custom one, like a custom layout or something, obviously, again, you're gonna know the ID because you'll be building the custom layout. 
or any other any other text view or any other layout you might want to look in core. So the two kind of main ones would be core and input. That's where you're going to look for IDs. So in our case, we're using a dialog that has an input. So I'm going into the input section. I'm going to go into resources, go into layout, and then there is the dialog that comes into view. So if I click this, the ID that I'm interested in is MD uh, MD input message. That is the that's the ID of this edit text right here. So that is the one that we need to reference in our test. So I'm copying that. I'm going to go back to Android Studio and write r.id.md input message. And now I want to write something into that edit text. So just like when we're performing a click, we need to use dot perform. Uh, so if you were clicking, you would do click, but we want to write something. So we're going to do type text and then write in that name that we expect. So the expected name. And that will write the name of Mitch into the edit text. Now I want to again try to click the OK button. So I'm actually just going to copy this. So now that there is some input, I should be able to click the OK button and that will dismiss the dialog. And now I want to make sure the dialog is gone. So make sure dialog is gone. So on view with text r dot string, I can actually just copy this one again up here. So on view with text, making sure that dialog is gone. I'm going to write not. That's, that's how we test to make sure that something is not in view, getting the correct import. Uh, so any of these three, the org hamcrest core, or any of these org hamcrest ones will find that that doesn't matter which one, making sure the dialogue is gone. And now we want to finally confirm that that name was set to the text view. So confirm name is set to text view in activity. So on view with ID, r.id dot text name. That's the ID of the text view inside of the activity. And then check that it matches with text. So with text, and we want to match the expected name. And that will complete our test. So we're launching the dialog. We're checking to make sure the dialog is in view. We're trying to click the OK button before a name is entered. So it shouldn't dismiss the dialog. We want to check to make sure the dialog is still in view because this did not dismiss it. We want to enter some input into the edit text. We want to click the OK button. We want to make sure the dialog has now been dismissed and then check the dialog to make or check the activity to see if the name was set to it. So let's go up here, right click, run the new test and let's see if everything passes. So this is actually kind of a fun one to watch. I'll bring the emulator so that you can see it enters the name and then it closes um, and it actually does fail. So let's uh, let's explore this. I think I actually know why it failed. I forgot something. So if we look in here, we expand this. It says test show dialog capture name. Let's go down to the error. Click this and it says that um, there's a problem here. So it's uh, if we go up a little bit, it says no views in hierarchy match found uh, no views in hierarchy found matching with the string. So, um, so okay, the, the reason this failed is when you're testing for whether something is gone or not, you can't use not is displayed because if something is gone, it's not in the view hierarchy. So you can't test if it's displayed and you can't test if it's not displayed. So what we need to do is uh, check if it does not exist. So we can write does not exist. Oh, it's without the matches. So get rid of matches, right? Because matches, matches implies that something is in the view hierarchy. So we want to check that this thing does not exist at all. And that should pass our test. So I'm going to bring the emulator on the screen this time for when we run it. So you can see that it, uh, it actually writes the input into the field. I think it looks kind of cool. It looks funny. It's like launching the dialogue, entering some text, done, set the text. All right, cool. So that should have passed. Let's bring it up here. And there's our green check mark. So that is going to be it for uh, for this example. So again, uh, whether you're using material dialogues or not, or using the like kind of standard Android dialogue, dialogue fragments, it's going to be the same game you're playing here. You're going to show the dialogue. You're going to check if it's visible. You might put some input into it. You might um, have the user click some, some check boxes. Maybe they're moving some switches, whatever. It doesn't matter. The name of the, the, the whole process is always going to be the same. You're testing if it's displayed, testing to see if some text matches, check, checking to see if some switch is where it is, something is checked, whatever it is. Um, like I said, again, it's all going to be the same. So now in the next video, uh, we are going to work on toast messages. So we're going to look at, uh, you know, does a toast come into view? Maybe is there a particular text value inside of that toast message? 
Toast messages messages are used a lot in Android, so I think it, it wouldn't be right to move forward without checking if uh, they were, if Toast were working correctly. So if you like the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, let me know down below if you want to see anything uh, in particular, anything like see me test something in particular. And again, if you want to watch the rest of the course, it's completely free. Uh, it's go to my website, code, co go to my website, codingmitch.com, or go to YouTube. You can watch it there too. And I'm going to be making a more advanced course after this one, where I show you uh, how to test like things like architecture, uh, repository pattern, uh, network requests, cache requests, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to watch the more advanced course, you'll need to follow, keep, keep kind of in the loop and know uh, what's going on. It'll probably be next month. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.